And uh, what I wanted to do real fast is I wanted to show you my campaign calendar for the final quarter of last year. Uh, just so you could see it. I was digging through finding old wall calendars. I keep them. They're kind of fun. And I'm looking through like, holy crap, look how much we did then. Whoa, that's amazing. Because this is the pattern that I use uh, to make sure that I have cash revenue events always happening for the business. One thing that will really bless you guys is to take the opportunity to write down everything that you're doing on a daily basis and do it for a little while. Sharfin had me do this. I wanted to hit him. I was like, there's no way. And, um, but I did at this time study. It sucks. I hate it. I know it sucks. But I started realizing, I started realizing by, by writing down what was happening every 15, 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, I was like, let, let's, let's like categorize my activities here. How much time am I spending actually marketing or selling? And it was like 10% of my time. And so I looked back at all these other tasks and I was like, holy crap, why am I doing these other things? Busy work, busy work, busy work. And I started going in and chopping a whole bunch of it. I was like, how can we flip this? I want to spend 80% of my time on revenue generating activities instead of like the 10% now. And so that's why this strategy, that's why having something like a campaign calendar is so powerful because I'm able to look and plan out three to six months ahead always, what is my next revenue generating activity or event happening, virtual or physical? What's the next campaign that's coming out? What's the next campaign that's coming out? This, this right here, my friends, this is like how you plan the revenues. This is how you, this is how you predict the future for your revenues, especially in things like info product space, well, any of them, uh, software, um, uh, again, physical stuff. It, it, it doesn't matter, supplements, what you're doing is you're planning out what the next big revenue generating thing is, right? Th this is huge. So you can see on there, um, we've got October. I wrote book with a question mark, meaning should I start outlining my book? Not even close, <laughs> right at the top left there. In the bottom, I was like, okay, let's go and let's develop free cftrial.com. That still didn't end up happening, but, uh, but we did get the initial parts up and out the door. Um, Remember I put events and product launches on there, right? Events and product-based things. So I had a speaking at an event called BossCon. Then I went and spoke at another event called Caracon. Then I went and spoke at Carnegie Hall. Um, then I spoke, then there was Inner Circle. And then we took a vacation uh, for three or three days. Uh, then we, we redid Secret MLM Hacks. That was the whole campaign that week. That was October. Um, and on the back of the Secret MLM Hacks redo, we did a little mini cash campaign. Build up the pressure, get on interviews, podcast about it, boom, 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 boom. And uh, had a big influx of, fat, of cash come in, okay? So one of the things that I'll do, guys, it still cost me about 10 to 15 grand per funnel because I'm not doing it. I don't want pros to do it. And we hook you guys up with those people. So it still costs, it costs a lot of cash, but the way that I do it is net 30 terms. So what I do is I'll plan the campaign. They're out building the funnel. I'm building the pressure for it. I go do this launch campaign. I put my hustle face on. I put sweat equity into it. But the launch, I take that first money and I just go pay off the funnel team. And now I'm left with this amazing asset for nothing, right? And th that's how I do it. Any leftover cash, I just go dump it into evergreen campaigns and that's how I make all my money. And that's how I haven't had to take a loan or anything. I'm going to do it for the office because that's a ludicrous amount of money. <laughs> we were like, we could self-fund it, but I'm not going to self-fund 650 grand. <laughs> um, the payments are like 10 grand a month too. So might as well pay it and launch a webinar. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, next month, right? We had the Offer Lab event. There was, um, I met with Brad. I did, we did a secret MLM Max value thing moving into Thanksgiving. Like, hey, um, you know, holidays are a great reason to go sell. That's why you see businesses do it, right? Hey, here's another reason for us to put a hook in front of you. Get something for your loved ones, right? It's just another hook. Um, we planned the, the Monday baby event in the notes section there on November. We were planning that because it was coming up in about six to eight weeks. That's about when I needed to start pushing the event hard. Um, December, anyways, I'm not gonna keep going. But I, what I do though is I'll color code my calendars and I'll put events in blue, which is why it's in blue. And then I'll put products usually in green because it's like cash. <laughs> so green, bam. And I'll go in and I'll plan out my launches and stuff like that in, in the green. And what's cool about that is it makes me look at a macro level what are my, as the marketer, the CMO, VP of sales, right? I'm the best salesman of my company. You will always be that way. What are my cash generating activities that I'm planning for? And if you don't have any, well, no wonder you may not be where financially you want to be. 
Make sense? This is a simple way to solve it, but it keeps you always planning. So what I do is the top of each month is I'll look forward at least another month. So I'm always out two, three, up to six months. Six months, I kind of get a little bit, get a little guessy, right? Usually it's three to four months. And in that way, I'm always kind of planning it. I'm like, okay, in order to do that, we should start developing pressure for this now. I wonder how fast we could spin up some show assets so we can start talking about it. A new show there might be kind of neat. Hey, could we go create a list of all the people who spoke at Funnel Hacking Live? I want to start reaching out to them, seeing if I can get on their shows. Better yet, what if I had them on my show first just to show some goodwill? And on that, on the little off-cuff comments that always happen, I ask if they will get me on theirs. Oh, it's a great idea. Great idea. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Let's go, go get that list. That'd be great. If you go get that, that'd be sweet. Okay, sounds good. Uh, you know what? Now let's go create a freebie talking about the fact that I'm going to go get, you see what I'm saying? And we start stacking we start stacking attention. Cool, that's the plan for that campaign. Three months is a long time. It's a long time, especially in the funnel space, right? So I'm like, cool, what other campaign could we do for the same product? What other campaign could we do for the same product, right? Or maybe we're gonna start getting ready for the next thing to go sell them. And this is that strategy piece, this is like you're playing chess that's very hard to teach, where you're just, you're being a tactician. And you're looking at the stuff and you're like, hey, this is how I'm going to go. Anyway, so what I go do to Evergreen, there's always, I'm going to teach you a few Evergreen strategies here. That's what the session's going to be. But regardless of whatever strategy that you go for, I always do these things. Okay. So number one, I'm going to keep publishing. Okay. I'm going to keep publishing. Uh, I'm going to get interviewed. Interview.com, right? Interviewu.com. I'm always going to have that be part of my weekly repertoire. I'm just, I'm always going to do it. Um, John and I actually have a standing every two, every other Tuesday afternoon for four hours. We block time to just go shoot video. Um, and when I kick up these other shows, it's going to be even more than that. Um, the other thing I do is I'm always going to educate my following on where they continue to buy from me. And I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. But I found that most of the time, people just don't know what they can buy from me. Um, in fact, one of the most common questions I've gotten in the last week on Instagram is, hey, what other courses do you have? <laughs> right? A lot of people want to buy from you. They just don't know what they can buy from you. And so the, 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 we misname the problem. We think the problem is our funnel's not good enough or, or maybe the, the marketing's not good enough. Maybe they would buy. They just don't know what you have. So I'm going to tell you how to solve that here as well. Okay. Uh, number four, I want you guys, uh, I, I do start turning on one core evergreen campaign machine at a time. I'll show you what I mean by that. And then number five, know exactly what you're promoting each week for the next, again, six to 12 weeks. Um, and this really focuses the energy on selling and marketing stuff instead of busy work. You as the entrepreneur are solely responsible for the amount of revenue that comes in. It does not go on anybody else. Even when I hire salespeople, it's still on me. And if you can have that level of extreme ownership in the cash generating roles, your revenue goes up. It just goes up. Uh, one of the principles my dad taught me um, that really changed my life uh, is when I was a kid. He said, hey, you know, I, I was talking to him. He won't, he won't want me to say the number, but he was making a lot of money in the corporate world. I was like, how are you making so much money? He's a software architect. And there's a lot of broke software engineers out there. So I was like, how are you making so much money? He's like, because I've always done well to position myself on the revenue generating roles of a company. Never on the cost. What are cost sides of companies? Support, fulfillment, right? Doing things that have to do like packaging things up and shipping stuff out. What do you think roles go what are the first roles to go when stuff hits the fan? Those roles. What roles stick around? Cash. And when you're associated with cash, why do salesmen get paid so much, sometimes even more than the CEOs? Their role is associated with revenue generating activities. I always want my role to be associated with the revenue generating roles and activities inside of a company. That's it. I never, ever, ever want to be associated or do fulfillment or cost-based activities in a, in a business. And, and I was like, that's a brilliant, that's brilliant, right? Give it up for Papa Larson, right? Oh, yeah. Killing it from another state, doesn't even know it. I will let him know. <laughs> yeah, but that's a big principle. So if you're not making as much as you want to, even in your nine to five, if you still have one, which is great, I'll never make fun of this, it's awesome if that's what you want to do. Uh, and you want to stay in it, it's awesome. But being associated with revenue is a big, big deal. 
So everyone who works for me full time is associated with a revenue generating role. Even my assistant. How does my assistant make money with her role? By taking admin stuff off my plate. It actually lets me go do the revenue generating things. Everyone who truly, truly is a cost slash fulfillment based role, I outsource. I don't even want them under the roof. Hey, I can outsource that. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> which is very interesting that we outsource the funnel build. Okay. We tell them exactly what to do and it's extremely tight. It's not like we're just finding anybody. Just so you know, we have like the, the pro funnel builders on the planet still. But it's fascinating though, that we don't go out. Anyway, it's very fascinating. Um, okay, let me get to this next part right here. Okay, you have to know that again, I'm just gonna say it again, post launch, you gotta start tracking your hours, seeing where your time's being spent because the mistake when you have a successful funnel is to start building another funnel. Stop it. <laughs> How many of you guys have done that? I'm raising my hand because I've done it myself. The, that's the worst thing you can do. The best thing you can do is more marketing and campaign and sales noise activities in the direction of your current funnel. Don't go build another one. Keep revenueing that thing like crazy. Don't, don't even think about automating it for a while. You know, um, anyway. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna continue to do revenue uh, generating things. And most of my time, it's, it's gonna switch. So mentally and emotionally, I've got to take off, I've got to take off the entrepreneur hat, solving problems hat. I don't know, no, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna have, a, it's like half of it is marketing, which is delivering the product to a marketplace, and the other half is selling, closing, right? Closing, I'm in that full-time activity. Once you got something, you run with it. That's why Secret MLM Hacks made so much money automated and why it is right now while I'm up here. Because I stopped focusing on the offer after a while. Stop. I wish uh, there, was a, there was a guy, I remember I was at an event speaking and he's like, how do I get my webinar to convert at 30%? I was like, what does it convert at now? He's like 25. I was like, that's amazing. That's amazing. Do you need it to convert at 30% or should you just get more eyeballs to see it? It can be easier to go get more eyeballs to see it than go through the painstaking split testing process. I don't split test very much. In fact, I think I've done split tests twice because <laughs> I make more money just by finding more ways to, to generate sales noise than tweaking every single thing inside the, fu inside the funnel. Okay. Anyone ever uh, read the book, uh, Ready, Fire, Aim? Anyway, uh, a few guys? Okay, cool. That book absolutely amazing. What they found after a bunch of studying lots of companies was that the companies that exploded the fastest from like the five, $10 million range to like multiples of that was not the companies that found additional ways to optimize their existing offers. It was the people who went and made more offers. Okay. But you can't run right to that. Okay. Instead, that's what I'm saying with this right here. As soon as you deliver that, as soon as you do the launch, as soon as you get it out the door, don't go make the next offer immediately. What you're trying to do is create some levels of automation. So the thing stands on its own, stay involved in the selling, stay involved in the marketing, stay involved in the closing, do those activities. Don't get distracted by the activities of things on the pages as much. Keep doing all the automated thing because what you're looking for one funnel away, right? One funnel away is automated sales. Russell doesn't talk about it that much anymore. He has that summit evergreened, right? It took a little while, it took, us, took, us a, took us a while to get that evergreen, to get it out the door. And once it was automated, now you see him going off and doing things like funnel flicks in the next piece, but he doesn't move from funnel flicks until it stands on its own legs and without his involvement, closes without his involvement, sells and markets without his involvement. And so this is a really key moment. When you go out and you actually start doing it, right? Take that launch cash, dump it into your evergreen campaigns, pay off funnel teams when you keep doing this on your own, right? Pay off the teams, pay off, boom, now you're at net zero. But I'm not gonna just run to the next offer and I'm not gonna get distracted 24 seven by all the little micro things inside the pages because that's really not what's gonna do it. It's gonna do it. It's gonna keep cash flowing by all the noise in front of it. When it begins to stand on its own legs, then begin to look at something else. Uh, Russell has said many times, don't, don't move on to the next funnel till you make a million bucks. I'm not saying that's the rule. Sometimes that rule gets taken too. I don't know. It's up to you, but you'll see it. You'll notice it. Oh my gosh, this is working on its own. When you start waking up and there's money in your account and you were sleeping, <laughs> those are good signs, right? Um, okay. I want to teach you guys a few pieces of value ladder education. Okay. Huh. 
Hustle face. Is that right before the resting pitch race? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, let's go through this. All right, now these are very simple ways to educate your people on what else they could purchase from you. And often they are already a buyer or, or, or maybe they're close. And sometimes they just need awareness on what else they could go purchase. Has anyone here ever gotten obsessed with an author and you bought all their books before you read the first one? Yeah, me too. <laughs> I just did that for um, Dr. Mate. Dr. Mate, if you ever heard of Dr. Mate, uh, maybe uh, he is a um, psychologist. Um, anyway, amazing, amazing, brilliant guy. But I bought everything and I haven't even finished the first book from him, <laughs> right? Case in point, right? And so this is what we're gonna go through here. These are very simple ways to educate the market on what else they could purchase from you um, um, to just close that little gap. Um, in fact, I wish I had it with me. Um, have you guys seen the, I have, it's called the, it, it's a, I call it a pamphlet, but you know, go to Funnel Hacking Live. Do you guys go to Funnel Hacking Live and you see on the chairs there? Okay, a few you guys, you see on the chairs there, Russell had published his value ladder so you could see everything else that they could buy from you. Brilliant move, brilliant move. Because now they're looking at a brochure of basically his offers, but he's calling it a success path. Very clever. Oh, first go through this funnel and then you can ascend and you can be on this tier and then you can be on this tier. Yeah, right, Jackson's holding up right there, right? That is it. That, that, uh, that was that one mine or is that one his? That one looks like mine, I think. But so we went, yeah, that's mine, okay. So we went and we created the same thing. Even so, half the things on there aren't even available yet. But guess what? It's building pressure, building pressure. And so I go a very, very easy, fun way to go. If you have more than one thing, you start thinking about ways. Uh, these are evergreen activities. That's why I'm talking about this. These are things that create evergreen sales. If I create a pamphlet and I hand it out at events or I send the PDF to, um, let's say you're speaking on a summit and people are like, give us a PDF. Is there some kind of handout you want to give? Which is very standard. Oh, Yeah. Here's my pamphlet, and on the back is your value ladder. Totally done it. It's awesome. Um, has anyone ever seen 2 coachingcom 2 coachingcom Yeah, yeah, okay, good one. Same thing. Basically, a digitized version of the pamphlet. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to put as a funnel my entire value ladder with links to the beginnings of those funnels. That's been nice because when people ask, um, there's been a few times where I've been on interviews where they're like, where should I go next? Where can people find out more about you? And I can tell that they have a really big list of buyers <laughs> and they like really like what I'm saying. I'll be like, go to capitalistcoaching.com. That's what it is. Capitalistcoaching.com. And capitalistcoaching.com has everything in there, right? Um, all of my offers, basically a digitized version of that pamphlet. It's a very easy way to spread out there what else people could purchase from you. The reason I started doing this list, you guys, um, it was probably about six, maybe 12 months ago. Uh, probably 12 months ago now, there was an inner circle meeting that was happening. And this guy was standing up saying how his business had exploded so fast and he, he wasn't doing a good job of the cash management afterward. He owed the IRS like millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And so as a group, we were trying to figure out ways to get him big cash injections through massive hyper sales activities. Um, and and that was what he was doing for his time while he was up there. And I just remember, that's why Brad Gibb, listen to what he is saying, okay? That's why I like dove. I actually remember hearing that. And I was like, Brad, I know you do this thing. What is it? And I started diving in with him. Um, and so, because I was like, ah, so many people get stuck in that scenario. They sell too fast. They don't know what to do about it because um, the stuff's powerful, right? It's a different set of problems, but good ones. So anyway, after the mastermind, I had gotten off stage. I had done the thing, you know, and, and we we're all just chatting. The day was over. And he looks, this guy looks at me and he walks up and he goes, I want to tell you how much I love and appreciate your material, but I just want to tell you one thing. If you had been more open on what you really do for a marketplace, I may not be in the scenario that I'm in. Ooh, it, it, it actually hit me pretty hard. It affected me. And I realized that what I do, I need to be louder about it. And if I have more things available for people to get from me, I'm not telling him about it. That is on me and it actually can be hurting people. Everything that you guys do, it is the exact same way. There are, there are people out there who are begging for what you're doing. They just don't know what they can get from you. And so that's why I started doing this and being cognizant of those things that cause success. 
and, and, and continue it in an evergreen sense. He wasn't saying it was my fault. He was saying, I just want you to understand why you should push harder than you are. And I was like, hmm. He's like, don't, don't kill yourself. You know, there's a, there's a smart way to do it. He's like, I just want you to see that though. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I was like, I got to get louder. How can I educate people on what else they could get from me? So anyway, Funnel Hub, that's a big one as well. If you go to stevejlarson.com, uh, that was made by Mike Schmidt and AJ Rivera. Um, they, uh, basically, it's a website, but with a funnel future purchase intent behind it. They found a way to kind of brochure all of your funnels on a website. Very interesting. Uh, funnel Hub, that's a good one. Uh, the email footers and page footers, I can tell you just from actually seeing the numbers, um, ClickFunnels makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a month by putting in their emails in the footer all those other products. <laughs> Crazy. Hundreds of thousands of dollars every month. They're not doing anything extra. The email might not have not anything to do, nothing at all with what that footer they're actually going to go buy. But by putting in the footer what else, what else, and by saying it in that language, you can see mine. Um, and you can open up some of my emails, right? It's like, what else can I get from you, Steven? Well, step one, make sure you're checking into all the podcast material, right? Then it clicks over there and takes more. Step two, why don't you get some of my freebies? I'm literally a value ladder dripped out. Right. Step three, let's go get some of those free plus shipping things. Just cover the shipping, we'll sit on out to you. And it's got the links over there. If you want to attend an event and you feel like you're ready for that level of awesome commitment, you know, I'll say something like that. Click here, offermind.com. Want to get a little more coaching program? And uh, yeah, go offer lab. Interested in a mastermind? Join the waiting list for an open seer. Want the book? Me too. Join the waiting list. <laughs> you're right. But what's interesting is by, by doing that, I, cash comes to me for, because of the strategy. I, I do it on my... Uh, opt-in pages and on my thank you pages, but I don't do it on OTOs because I don't want them to leave. I want them to stay on the OTO. That makes sense? Um, I don't do it on orders. I don't, nothing has to do with the actual collection of cash, but I will do it on thank you pages because it's like, what else is the conversation? I'll do it on opt-in pages because like, what else? They might leave. So the pages, that's what I do. Emails, um, I do it a little bit less aggressive than I used to, but I still put links in the bottom of what else they could get from me. And I just save it as a template in ClickFunnels. So every time I send an email, I'll just choose the template. I don't have to redo it every time. Um, if you guys go to funnelfooter.com, it will pull in the template into your account. It's a share funnel that we automated a link to, funnelfooter.com. And it will pull in for you the share funnel of one of my favorite funnel footers, page footers, okay? Um, funnelfooter.com. Uh, next one, funnel email sequences. Ending with a value ladder marinade. Here's the scenario. Somebody opts in. They go through that follow-up sequence I was just teaching you about. There's five emails. One, two, three, four, five. What do you do with them at the end? We send them to the Seinfeld list. But before that, what if they didn't buy or did, but they're still engaging with you? That they want to buy something. Maybe that wasn't the thing. Maybe it was back. Ah, you know. Just like on a thank you page, I'll tell them what else they could go purchase. I do the same thing in an email sequence. So I'll have a final email or two that's like, did you know that this is, whether or not you chose to get what you just got through right there, it's awesome. But a lot of people also like these things. And I'll just immediately send an email, just pushing them. It's value ladder education. That's another word I call this, right? Value ladder education in an email at the end of sequences that tell them what else they could go get. It's the equivalent of making an email that's all about the, the email footer. Um, that, that's a good one uh, also. Uh, again, I just mentioned it, but there's a fu uh, funnel ender. Uh, so thank you pages. A uh, lot of extra revenue comes in because of these kinds of strategies. Putting a, on the thank you page, um, here's what else you could buy from me. Here's where else you could go. Um, uh, anyway, some people think it's just free plus shipping funnels. It's not true at all. Um, I've done this with webinars. I've done this with, I've done this with a lot of places. Um, but yeah, thank you pages. Putting in what else they could purchase from you. Big one. Very, very successful one. Okay, let me come over here. Like a mastermind. Let me just, I'm just reading comments real quicker. Is your value ladder pamphlet page just a simplified version of your funnel hub? Yeah. Yeah. Can you do a training or tell us where to go and how to track where sales come from from footers? I can't because I'm not a tracking expert. That is definitely its own thing. But if you were to go into the ClickFunnels group and say, who's good at tracking revenue from certain sources, you'd get a lot of answers on that. 
because I don't, I, I actually don't do that personally. Um, I just know whenever we take it out, our revenue goes down. When we put it back in, it goes back up. I haven't gone as far as to track it. I should. I'd rather go launch another funnel. <laughs> so, mm. or there's other companies that that is their whole service. They track every dollar and from its source to the T. Um, I just, <laughs> I want to be a marketer. <laughs> so, um, oh, Funnelytics, awesome. Thanks, Thelon. Um, how can we make the footer I use cam active campaign? You'll have to ask them. It's probably just a template though. Go look at e my emails and just model it. Okay, any other questions here? Sweet. Okay, I just want to real fast just walk you guys through a few of these evergreen strategies. And these are things, again, I choose, I, I'm actually showing these to you in the order I recommend that you do them, okay? Again, I recommend this order. Um, the first thing, understand that eventually all serious players outsource content strategy and management. If you're gonna get serious in this game and you really wanna make a ton of cash, content is part of the game. It's part of the internet game. It, has, it's like, it just is. Um, especially where things are going now. It used to not be so much that way, uh, but SEO is kind of coming back. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, especially with what's gone on in, in the economy and such. Um, ads are kind of like trying to capture some ground they lost since people aren't spending as much. SEO is like, so that's one of the major, the major reasons for it. Um, so SEO, huge deal. Um, content machines. So I use people like Daxi. Um, I've created my own content agencies in the past and it's cool. It's just a little expensive. I prefer to go to like a, like an actual agency that this is all they do. Uh, and for the amount of money that I know comes back from it, it's, it's been great. So what I do again is I will create, I'll go back to my campaign calendar and I'll start to plan out when I'm, like Holly was teaching him, man. Like, it's the exact same thing. When should I do what content? Where should I put things out there? How can I go, right? That's, that's, a, that's a very easy way to solve this, this problem here. Um, so then all we do is we just look at my calendar and we just plan this, the white space time for me to get the thing done so nothing else gets done there. Revenue generating activity for sure, okay? Questions on that? I know I have a whole event on this that you guys have access to as well, but... Um, How does SEO work with ClickFunnels? I've heard that doesn't work very effectively. Tell me I've heard wrong. I don't know. I get my SEO off of content and I send marketing to my funnels. You can, you can still SEO a ClickFunnels page. It's just a web page. Um, but there's different people who are better SEO experts that will know more on that. Um, yeah. So I'm not trying to SEO the funnel usually. I'm trying to SEO the thing that sells the funnel. That's, that's way easier to go do also. Go. Alrighty, ads machine, um, same kind of thing. I, Emily Hirsch, all right, eventually all serious players do not try to go do this. How many of you guys saw this yesterday? I was a little bit overwhelmed by our stuff. <laughs> all right, yeah, okay, all of your hands went up. Okay, right, yeah, right. It's a lot. It is its own career, right? That is why I was like, someone's like, why don't you know Facebook ads? Are you kidding me? Do you see what you just went through? Like, I, no, no, not at all. I know, I know my lane. I know my lane. I'm gonna stay in my lane. Uh, I think it was Adam Smith that said, all increase of wealth comes from the segregation and, and, um, and basically owning of individual roles, right? The more that, it, it, that's not the direct quote, obviously, but he's basically like, if you, wealth comes from you siloing, don't be a Renaissance man and try to know everything. Silo, get good at one thing and know how you interact and interface with those other parts and pieces. So I say these in these two orders because these ads people will ask if you publish and they will be stoked if you do and they will be freaked out and scared to work with you if you don't. Ads and content work together for the sake of the funnel, okay? Like, like crazy. So I go out and I, and I, I, I outsource this piece, right? I, I just have to go do the thing and then I hand it over to them. They SEO it, they do all the stuff. It's like, it's, it's a million times easier. Plan for this cost and this cost in your goal number, right? Back in number two, the goal, plan for this. Minimum monthly spend, just include that as part of what it costs to run your company and plan the funnel so it covers that. And, and, and now you're left literally doing the thing that for some reason, most internet marketers freak out about, but you are going to, you are literally going to jump over them and, and pass everybody else. It's, it's ridiculous what this does for you. Doors open. Like I can't even tell you how fast when you start publishing, um, your bank account cash flows king, right? This is the easiest way for me to with ads 
to continually create cash flow over and over and over again. This cash flow piece with the ads machine, if we could keep the slides up, that'd be awesome. I'm going to be going back and forth quite a bit. Um, but going back and forth uh, um, with the ads back to the machine, back, they talk to each other, man. They know each other. And they'll be like, hey, so I'll meet with my content people. And they'll be like, Steven, you need to do content around this. I'm like, cool. Thanks for doing my heavy lifting. I trust you. I don't want to go figure that on my own. Exact same reason I was telling you about why you pay me. That's the same thing with pay them. They're telling me the same thing. Same thing with these guys. They'll be like, Steven, it would be awesome. We're seeing these patterns work the best right now. What's going on with these platforms. And uh, we've read, read the terms and conditions. Update your page. Update your page, please. Go take off this. Change the vernacular here. You don't want to get shut down. This will help you kind of like... Uh, uh, stay open longer, but then uh, we also can start running content and ads to these pieces. It's just, it's nuts what happens, okay? This is really what happens in the background, okay? Next one I go do is Dream 100. Uh, check that out. He just, he just posted that picture, Mr. Ryan Moran. I am very excited. I'm hoping to license the shirt to him. Um, we're just, we're just, we're just working on it. <laughs> so, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I just did, so whatever. <laughs> Ryan Moran, I'm gonna try and ask you to speak at off or my or off a launch. Okay, just, just so you know. So if you hear this, I'm coming for you. <laughs> uh, but he's an awesome guy. Eventually, all serious players get to know and collaborate with other serious players. It's part of the game. If you got in the internet space because you thought you got to sit behind the computer in isolation, you're gonna have a very short revenue road. Um, not that you can't have a great lifestyle, not that you can't like, but eventually you, you're gonna have to, it's still business as normal, okay? Um, so I went out and I started mailing these lumpy packages to tons of people. We had 27 of our Dream 100 respond to us in three weeks. What did I do? I wrote a webinar script five different parts of a webinar, package one, package two, package three, different lumpy thing inside of it, pitching them on why they should either get on my show or promote my thing. It's webinar scripts everywhere. Okay. Um, but that, that's, this is huge. This is huge. Know the players in your space. Start to get to know them. Otherwise, they will assume, they don't know how to interact. You know what's fascinating is like every time a, uh, a piece of news comes out that's bad, that people don't want to know. Like whenever you see a big corporation, like, um, <laughs> like uh, uh, this is a bad example, but uh, you know, like lettuce, romaine lettuce, like how many recalls romaine lettuce has? And what do they do? They try to get out and they try to control the story. That's good. That's smart on them. Oh, there's another recall out there. Or like whenever you see another like car dealership with some kind of recall, they got to go do it. What do they do? Call, call that press conference because they're going to control the story or the story gets made up about you. Same kind of mentality with these influencers. Eventually, as you start to get larger, you need them to know how to think about you or they're going to create their own story. You don't want that. I want to control how they see me. All right. So one thing that we just created is we created this capitalist pig box and uh, we're going to start sending out, like I got the t-shirt sizes. I think of everyone Oh, I mean, that's why Ryan Rand's wearing it. We got the t-shirt sizes from someone on Ryan Rand's team for the whole team. We sent them all the swag we've ever created ever. They freaking love it. And uh, I mean, he wears it all the time. He says, he told me it's his favorite shirt, um, which is super cool. And then I asked, what did I, Frank Kern, same thing. So the Capitalist Pig box with the shirt inside of it, Capitalist Pig hat, invitation to come on shows, stuff like that. You don't have to be in the package sending game to play Dream 100. The principle is that you start to get to know and interface with and create a relationship with the serious players that are going to be there long term that you could do a collaboration on with later. Okay. Um, that's, this is a huge one. So again, though, I am doing this in this order. Am I more prone to reach out and say hi to you if you already have a machine running? Totally. If, you have already, if you're already publishing, it's going to be... I, I've gotten so many invitations. Do you guys know uh, uh, Omar... The Passionate Few show. You guys know uh, Omar. Uh, he just had Frank Kern on his show. Frank never gets on shows. They just reached out. Huge show. <laughs> it's funny. You know, none of you know those. those are, I guess not that big. <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a big show. Uh, they just asked me to get on their show. That's awesome. Why? Because he loves my show. I didn't know that. Like this opens so many doors. That's why I like had you guys like, uh, hey, like I will commit to doing this even if it sucks a little bit. It's because I need you to do this. Okay. And you need you to do this in your future. And the three years from you now person is going to love you for doing it. Okay. Um, anyway, you guys are going to be great with it. But uh, 
the stream 100 strategy, again, is the third thing that I go do in this. I typically don't do it first. I know who they are, but I usually don't start campaigning to them until after my ads are running well. The revenue that comes from me from Dream 100 is like nothing for a while, nothing, nothing. Oh, you want a collaboration? <laughs> Huge amount of cash and then back down to nothing. So I wanna create, since I'm using these offers as my core offer to create consistency and pay for business systems, I don't wanna use this strategy to base all of my business cost on. I'm gonna go use this strategy and this strategy. They're the ones that keep the doors open and pay for everything and keep enough cash and in to just always keep my business running. Right? And then huge payday, bam. Right? That makes sense? Strategically, from the way these revenues typically behave and the speed of the revenue, the velocity of the cash, this is a slower one, but explodes when it hits. And that's why I'm doing these in this order, though. Slower at first, but enables this one. Content slower at first enables the ads. The ads, it usually is the one, uh, again, that is just kind of steady eddy. Okay? All right, next one and final one here that I typically go for, not always, is affiliates. <sighs> not all serious players allow affiliates to sell their stuff. Huge pros and cons to it. Pros, you get more people talking about your stuff. Cons, affiliates are typically really lazy. Okay, and you gotta like hand hold them to death. So I do things to make it inciting for affiliates. An affiliate versus Dream 100, affiliates are usually people who have no list. They have no list, they have no influence, they have no following that's trying to sell someone else's product or they have a very small list, very small following. I would not call them an influencer, right? So on the left there, you see that I've got, um, I created this program called Affiliate Outrage. I created it after I saw Russell create Affiliate Bootcamp. <laughs> affiliate Bootcamp, the only, how many of you guys have been to Affiliate Bootcamp? As it currently is right now, that's like version 12. Uh, I got to help create like a version or two ago um, and teach the ClickFunnels community how to be an affiliate. It was when I was one of the first big projects I did with Russell that I was featured in. I asked him why he was doing it. And he said, because by giving away an affiliate marketing course, I'm literally grooming an army of affiliates for my own stuff. <laughs> and I was like, that's really smart. So I did affiliate outrage. If you go to affiliateoutrage.com, it's a free program. It's like 12 days of me asking platform specialists, how to sell other people's products on their platform, their specialist over. And it's like one of the most valuable affiliate things. ever. But by doing that, we found awesome affiliates and we train future affiliates. So it's, 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 we, we train our, our affiliate army, okay? Um, then I was like, why don't we put some ads? It's a free thing. So let's put some ad spend behind this. Let's figure out a way. So when we created Make Affiliates Great Again, we featured free access to Affiliate Outrage, the program right behind it on the left there. But that let us get cash flow to be able to do things to promote it because it's free otherwise. Okay. Um, the other thing that I'll go do, if you guys go to uh, my affiliate rewards, my affiliate rewards.com, that's Russell just voxed me. I think he's going to show that in something else because what I do is I show people what they can promote of mine. It's a little out of date, so I'm just telling you right now. But if you, people, are, Steve, do you have an affiliate program? Yes, I do. Watch the video. Get started in three steps. Number one, sign the form so we know how to pay you out. Number two, choose a thing. Number three, get the training, right? And this is, um, anyway, I'm just letting you know that usually affiliates, when you decide to go turn affiliate marketing on, it's like that was Colton's job when I hired him. That, that, I was like, Russell, I'm a one-man show here. Uh, my webinar is done about 100 grand. Who's the first person I should go hire? And he goes, a revenue generating role. Ah, he even said it after my dad years earlier. <laughs> he said, go hire a revenue generating role. I said, okay. He said, I would go hire an affiliate manager and their, their sole role is to go find pockets of people who want to promote your thing. So not only does it pay for their role cost, but it finds more revenues for your business. I was like, sweet. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, so anyway, that, which is very smart. Very smart to go do that because this is its own thing. That's what I'm trying, trying to get at here. Affiliate marketing is its own jam um, and, and getting good at it. Uh, guys that blew up really, really fast, a lot of them it's because of affiliate marketing, but it takes someone else and an expertise and someone else to go do it. Do you guys know Drew Canoli? Do you guys follow him or Trey Llewellyn? Any of those, those guys out right there? Okay, awesome. Okay, uh, uh, Drew Canoli, I'll go Trey. Trey Llewellyn, um, the reason Trey Llewellyn became Trey Llewellyn 
is because of an affiliate campaign. He went to a guy and said, hey, I would love to have someone who owns a list around survival stuff drop an email affiliating the fact that I have this survival flashlight, right? And it blew up. They made a ton of money so fast that it almost bankrupt him. So fast this fulfillment could barely keep up with him. Um, uh, Drew Canoli, uh, they started exploding, exploding when they found out how to get their product routinely sold on ClickBank. But that's again, it's its own thing. So I, I'm just bringing it up so that you see in tiers of things that give you more juice for the squeeze, I usually do this one last. It can be big, but it's like its own thing, okay? Um, I still do it in this order. Content, because it's awesome, and it sets up future sales of other products you haven't even thought of yet. Uh, and then as well, an ads machine, it's ridiculous. One of the fastest pull cash off the table immediately, things ever, and they talk to each other. And then Dream 100, collaborating with others. Um, I just had a message from, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this crap, another large person you all know asking if we can collaborate on something, okay? So it, it just, I just want you to know this works. This is how the whole thing works here. Questions with that, let me come over here real fast and then we'll go do a little workshop here. Uh, for the same makes sense. We sold Make Your Own Food Towers. Uh, did you do a podcast about OFA testimonials? You know, I think I did. Yeah, because I was teaching the strategy. It's one of the final few episodes of Sales Funnel Radio. Like the last, if you listen really carefully to the last like 30 episodes of Sales Funnel Radio, you can see and hear me, because I learned a lot by the three, 300th episode. Um, you can see tons and tons of these campaigns I'm starting to set up as the show closed so I could roll the show's audience into the next thing. You can hear it. <laughs> You'll see it, especially now that I've shown it to you. Uh... He opens loops. <laughs> I'm like, I can't teach 30 episodes of stuff right here. <laughs> awesome, guys. Hey, uh, if there's no questions here, what I want you to do is just kind of take 10 minutes to think through what you might do uh, evergreen campaign-wise. I'm still begging you, begging you that you do it in the order that I talked about. I'm sorry, that should be content, then ads, the Dream 100. I apologize. I go content, then ads, the Dream 100. Content is this huge staple. Um, uh, and what I do is in the order, though, um, in fact, we'll switch that. We'll just switch out the slide. If you guys go to the slides, it'd be awesome. We're on the slide there. Um, um, so just go ahead and again, the content, make sure it's, it's content then ads in Dream 100. We'll make sure that we switch that slide out when we go through edit and post that out. Um, but anyway, all I want you to do is just to kind of maybe think through how you would solve the problem of a content machine, the problem of ads. Are, how much does it cost for that kind of thing? Uh, what do you think uh, what do you think you could do in that content machine to make money with it? I've been approached by ClickFunnels a few times. They don't know how, they're, they're wondering how I cash flow my content machines so hard. <laughs> I was like, well, because I don't make content. I make marketing material as content. <laughs> That's why. Um, so, so go through and start thinking through how, how you want to start doing this. I know that those are like different future activities for a lot of you guys. Some of you guys that are on the spot, you've done the launch. Um, and so I want you to start thinking through how can I make a content machine? And when I, turn, when I talk about machine, you're just making a process. What's the flow going to be of every single episode? Flow, 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 flow. First episode, what happens next? Oh, I just handed it to Daxine, don't think about it. That's a good machine. That's an easy one on you, right? Or do you want to do more manual? First it goes here, then it goes there, then it goes there. You might think through some of the platforms that you're going to go marry, right? Um, ads, how do you want to do that? How do you want to handle that, right? Uh, Dream 100, I know that we've already kind of started going through that. And you, you, now you kind of see what Dream 100 is and how to interface with it. Maybe you could think through ways to start approaching them. But I just want you to spend 10 minutes on this because if you don't do this, you end up living in a launch business, it makes sense. I, it, that is so stressful. I can't even tell you how stressful it is. Most people don't make a long time career out of the internet marketing game because they get stuck in a launch company because they never do any of these evergreen activities. This is so key to you buying your future time so you don't die at the desk. Okay. Let's spend 10 minutes. I want you to think through these things. I'll be back in about 10 minutes here.